Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and watchOS 10 released to the public today. watchOS 10 is out everywhere around the world at the same time on all supported devices. And the supported devices this year are Apple Watch Series 4, all the way up to the latest Apple Watch Series 9 and Apple Watch Ultra 2. You will need iOS 17 in order to use Apple Watch with watch OS 10. And also this particular update is not a huge update as far as the size, depending on which version you're installing from, it could be anywhere from about 300 megabytes here all the way up to over a gigabyte. Now this update includes some of the largest updates we've ever seen with watch OS. And if you want to jump to anything specific in the video, be sure to check out the chapters in the description. Now, the first thing that they've updated has to do with what they're calling smart stacks. If you rotate the digital crown, you'll see, we have smart stacks. Now, no longer does it just rotate down into your control center. It now goes right into smart stacks that show you relevant information based on what's going on. Now, if you have a calendar event, it will show, you'll see the decibel levels here. We have set timer. We have our activity and more. So based on what we're doing, we'll see all of this information. We also have an update where now to get to the control center, we press the button on the side. So press the side button, rotate down, and you've got all of your regular control center updates. So that's something they've added and it's a little bit difficult to get used to it first, but once you use it a few times, you get used to it. You can also go into your notifications by pressing and holding on the top and pulling down. So if you just pull down, sometimes it doesn't show up. If you're in specific apps, if you press and hold, it will. So if you're in an app such as music and you want to get to your control center, press and hold at the top and pull down and you can get to the control center. So some of the controls overall have been changed. Also, there's a major overhaul of most of the apps that are included with watch OS 10. And as you just saw, music is now edge to edge. Some of the controls have changed where they're located. Everything just looks really nice and is utilizing the full display. The same is true. If we go into weather, you'll see, give it a moment just to load. It gives us some information. If we scroll down, we have some new dial displays and our regular forecast. We also have some options in the upper right to view things such as condition, precipitation, wind, and more. So we have fully redesigned weather apps. We also have redesigned apps such as the compass. We'll talk about that more in a moment. And additionally, we have other updates to things such as activity. If we go into activity, it's got edge to edge displays here, as well as if we go back home, we go and rotate up you'll see the decibel levels. If we go into that, you'll see the decibel meter has been redone as well. Stocks gets an update. So if we go into our stocks app, we'll just go down here, go to stocks. And again, it's going to be full screen. And once we're in that app again, it's full screen with all of our different stocks, lots of really nice updates here. And if we go down a little bit, we've got timers and we can create regular multiple timers and just have those set. So we can create a bunch of different timers. If we want to use multiples at once, we have the option to do that. It starts, we'll go back, go into our timer here, maybe add another, we'll add this one. And now we have these timers set. So very nice to use. It's also the same on iOS 17 with the timers as well. Now, of course, watch OS 10 includes some new watch faces. This is just the regular one. I normally use modular and I have the app Lumi in the middle. However, if we swipe over one of the first new ones is called palette palette shows you a different color and changes as the second hand sweeps around the outside edge. This of course is fully customizable. If we go to edit, we can change all of the different colors to whatever we'd like. So if we scroll through, you can go red, blue, whatever you'd like. We also have complications around the outside edge. And that's about it. If we go over to the next one, we have a new Snoopy watch face that's animated. There's over a hundred different animations. If I shut off the watch, pick it back up, you'll see a different animation every time you pick it up. So again, we'll just show just a couple here. You'll see that's another one. Some of them are really clever. So if you want to use this, you can, it's sort of an homage back to the first Apple watches. And if we go back and go into our watch faces, we have another one as well, and this is specific to the Apple watch ultra one and two, this is called modular ultra. So it shows the compass in the middle with complications around the outside edge. So again, if I press and hold edit, then we can change the outside bezel to things such as seconds, depth, elevation. We also have style. If we want to change the font style again, night mode, if we want to see night mode on off or have it auto switch based off the overall ambient light sensor. And additionally, we can of course change the color as well. I just have it set to multicolor. And then again, all of our complications can be customized. There's also a new watch face called solar analog. 
and again, fully customizable with the color. So we have dark and bright and dynamic mode. And then if we scroll over, we've got different colors as well. I sort of like the blue and red colors, but that gives you an idea of what it looks like with that solar analog watch face. And there's one other as well, and it's called Nike Globe. Nike Globe is available to everyone. You don't necessarily have to have a Nike Apple Watch. And again, you can customize it however you'd like. Scroll over, you've got your complications, and then you can just change it to whatever you'd like. So some really nice updates here, some really nice watch faces as well. I think I really like Solar Analog as well as Modular Ultra. So both of them are really nice. You can use whatever you'd like, and they're specific to certain watches. So the Watch Ultra only gets this one, but some of the other watch faces are available on different devices as well. Cycling workouts get an update. If I press my action button here, I have it set to open workouts. We'll scroll down and let's find Outdoor Cycle. If we go into Outdoor Cycle, wait for it to start, we can now pair this with Bluetooth accessories to actually give us more information about cadence, speed, and power. We also have power zone similar to what we have with running and also if you start a workout using cycling and you have an apple watch and an iphone connected where you actually have the dynamic island it will show in the top tap on the dynamic island and you have a large display showing you information so if you have this maybe on your bike attached with a dock, you'll be able to see it. So it gives all that information that you would want with your workout and more. If we go back into our workouts, scroll down and then go to hiking, this has been updated as well. So if you're using hiking, you now have the option in the compass with a three dimensional map. So you'll see we've got hiking going on. If I go to my compass here, we have a three dimensional map. Now we can scroll up and down, see our elevation and more. We also have new elevation alerts when you pass certain thresholds. Additionally, there's trail information and new topographic maps if maybe you're looking for a trail nearby. So find a trail nearby to hike. And here's a trail nearby, Seven Oaks Preserve. It gives an information as far as how far it is from here. We also can call. We've got some photos, outdoor parking, and it shows exactly where it is. So if we go into the map, we can have topographic maps of it if they're available. So this is really helpful, of course, if you want to use it for hiking regularly with your waypoints and more. We also get some health updates here. So if we scroll down, we don't have a separate health app, but rather Apple has broken this apart into different sections in Apple watch. So if we go to mindfulness, we have the new feature that we get with iOS 17 with state of mind. We can log how we're feeling right now or how we felt overall today, tap on it. We can change it from neutral to very pleasant to very unpleasant. So if we tap very pleasant, move to next, it says what best describes this feeling. So we'll just go down and say maybe confident, hopeful, select the next one. And it says what's having the biggest impact on you. So scroll down and you'll see maybe hobbies, spirituality, whatever works for you, community, and then tap to the next one. It will log this and then you can go back in an iOS and take a look at it later on. Additionally, there's vision help, which helps prevent myopia in children by measuring and encouraging your child to be outdoors more to benefit from the sunlight. You can actually see how much time you've spent in sunlight in the health app, and it uses the ambient light sensor on the watch to show you that. So if we go into the health app on iOS and within health, if we go to browse and then mental well-being, under mental well-being, if you scroll down, you'll see time in daylight. Time in daylight shows you how long you've been outside using the ambient light sensors of your iPhone and Apple Watch. So on September 10th, I was outside 73 minutes on the 11th, 81 minutes, and then it went down. You'll see below that it actually says spending 80 to 120 minutes outside each day can help lower the risk for myopia or nearsightedness. So it gives more information about that and just tracks it automatically to give you that information. Additionally, we have the same update with watchOS that we do with iOS when it comes to medication. So if we go back, go to medications, under medications, you can now set a reminder for that medication. And if we scroll down to the bottom, go to options, we now have the option for dose reminder and follow-up reminder. So if you want it to remind you 30 minutes after you haven't logged it when you're supposed to, it will remind you on your watch and your iPhone as well. To go along with activity and fitness, if we go into the fitness app on our iPhone and then go to Fitness Plus with iOS 17 and watchOS 10, we now have the option for custom plans. We can build a custom fitness plan and then stack multiple workouts one on another. So maybe we wanna do yoga and then we wanna work out or in any order you want, you can set that up. Set up cycling, then dance, any of those in an order and you can create custom plans to continue working out throughout the day. When it comes to FaceTime, if I go to notifications, you'll see it says Aaron Zolo video. If I tap on this, it brings me to a video here. And if I tap play, you can actually view the message on the Apple Watch now. If you're calling someone using FaceTime and they don't pick up, you can now record a video message like this and view it not only on iPhone, but also on watchOS with watchOS 10. 
So you can view it here or view it on your iPhone with this. Also with FaceTime, group FaceTime calls are now supported on Apple Watch. So where you couldn't make group calls with your Apple Watch before, you can now do that. There's also a feature we've been waiting for with watchOS 10 that's not available with the initial release, and that's called Name Drop, where we can seamlessly share our contact information by bringing our Apple Watch close to an iPhone or bringing it face to face with another Apple Watch. We'll be able to share our contact information later on doing this. However, it's not yet available with the initial release. Additionally, there's some enterprise updates with MDM being added to allow you to configure VPNs and deploy internal apps. Additionally, there's other app updates that I didn't show. So if we go down, go to the world clock, you'll see that this has been updated. It's now full screen edge to edge. Also, if we go up to maybe sleep, if you're using it to track sleep, you'll see it's been redone. Just about every app within watchOS 10 has a new update as far as that goes. So some really nice changes here, everything from news to you'll see there's one here. We'll go into music, like I said, with new controls and much more. As you go into each app, you'll see lots of different changes. So I think this is a great update, one of the largest updates, and it does take a little bit of time to get used to using the digital crown differently and no longer having it control night mode on the Apple Watch Ultra, but it seems to work pretty well once you get used to it it's just a little bit of a change. There's other small changes throughout, but those are the major changes. So that's everything with watch OS 10, some major updates to the overall interface. Hopefully we get that soon with iOS 17 next year. Let me know your favorite feature in watch OS 10 in the comments below. And of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.